<laughs> great to see you. He just missed a great joke I told. <laughs> no, no, there was nobody else here, but it was funny nonetheless. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is February 27th. It is Tuesday. Okay, get your act together. So what we like to do on this show is look at hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm a day trader. I like to trade penny stocks. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market, and I am particularly looking for stocks that have the potential to make us money. And I've got one I want to share with you today. This is Sphere 3D, ticker ANY. Now, to be completely honest, I didn't find it. It's been throwing at me multiple times over the last seven to 10 days. At least a half a dozen people have asked me to take a look at any. So I looked at any. She is a Bitcoin mining company. And like most Bitcoin mining companies, she's doing well. Because Bitcoin's doing well. It's up to what, $56,000 now? So all these Bitcoin mining companies that have been mining for a while, they got coins that they've gotten from a year ago, probably when they were worth $20,000 back then. Well, that pile of coins is swelling up and becoming worth more and more as the value of Bitcoin grows. And of course, they keep adding to that every single month by mining for more coins. So these companies have got piles of money that are just continually growing. So when six people asked me to look at any, I figured she must have something unique, something special going on. No, not really. I mean, she does have some unique news that came out about a settlement, which we're going to take a look at. But outside of that, she's growing just like the rest of them. So Annie finished the day at $2.29, and she dropped about 5.5% today. Now, she is a penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with benefits, new transaction fees. You don't have to pay to buy or sell your shares on the major exchange. Plus, you can trade pre-market, aftermarket. And don't overlook that, folks. Some of the biggest bounces I have ever seen have happened pre-market. So you know what any does? What was her relative volume today? We had a little bit of an increase, maybe 75%, going from 1.2 million roughly to almost 2 million shares. Share structure for any. Not bad. Outstanding share count isn't even 15 million, just over 14 million. Don't know what the float is, but it won't be more than 14 million, and it could be considerably less. Market cap for the company, we are just about at 35 million. Financials for any. All right. Over the last four years, her revenues were dropping from five and a half million to four to three, then jumping to six million at the end of 2022. Now, we know these are millions and not thousands because they tell us up here we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Now, what is strange here is while their revenues were dropping, they were making more and more money. Then all of a sudden, they kick their revenues up and they're losing a lot of money, down $13.5 million. What's up with that? Well, when we look at their quarterly reports, you can see it wasn't the full year. Whatever happened, happened in that last quarter, which we see a lot. The last quarter, there seems to be some balancing of the books or something, and we see some crazy numbers here. So we'd have to do some more research to figure out exactly what happened here. Looking at 2023, Revenues are back on track and growing. Three million, five and a half, five point seven million. And again, they're starting to make profit and it's growing. Looking at the balance sheet for any, they've got just under a million dollars in the bank. Total assets, fifty nine million. Total liabilities, way down there at eleven point two million. So we've got a nice chunk of stockholder equity here of thirty two million dollars. That is for us, the shareholders. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. We've got a 144 here, which is about some shares that are going to be sold, but it's just them discussing it. Hasn't happened yet. We've got some SC13Gs here. Now, an SC13G is always good news. This is a new investor coming in who is going to become part owner. So they're so interested in the company, they buy enough shares to get a percentage of the company and become part owner. 
When you see an A behind it, it means it's been amended. They had to fix something that wasn't printed up right. Well, we've actually got two of them here. One is for 10% of the company and one is for 5% of the company. Always good news. And taking a look at the news for the company. All right, we got current news down at the bottom when it comes up. All right. Um, what do we got here? Sphere 3D Corporation provides January 2024 production operation. We're going to take a look at that. And Sphere 3D announces agreement with Core Scientific. These are the two pieces of news we need to consider. And it is the uh, scientific one, this one here, which is the different news than anybody else has. So this came out January 23rd. Sphere 3D Corporation, which is dedicated to becoming the leading carbon neutral Bitcoin mining company, a point I didn't make a point about. Carbon neutral Bitcoin mining is a big deal because they use a lot of electricity, a lot of energy, and if they're not getting that energy from the right place, they're producing a lot of CO2. The company has reached a settlement agreement with Core Scientific Inc., which was approved by the United States bankruptcy judge Christopher M. Lopez. Turns out that Core Scientific went into bankruptcy, owing this company a lot of money for pre-hosting prepayments. Well, the company didn't get everything they were owed, but they did get $10 million. It wasn't a cash payment. It is an investment into Core Scientific. And there's a stipulation that if over a certain amount of time, I don't know how long, if the Core Scientific value depreciates, then Sphere 3D gets more equity given to them. So at this point, Sphere 3D and Core have no problems with each other. They're getting on. However, Sphere 3D still has a lawsuit against Griffin Digital Mining, and that is still in progress right now. The other piece of news is production. They're still bringing in coins every single month. This covers the last year, just a glance over. A year ago in January, they did 37 coins. January of this year, they did 61 coins. And in December, they did 73 coins. Folks, that's a lot of money. Honestly, I'm not concerned that they dropped from 73 coins down to 61 coins. First off, chances are in December, Bitcoin wasn't worth as much as it's worth right now. So you don't need as many coins to get as much money. But they're bringing them in regularly. But they're also selling them. They told us here that January of last year, they sold 121 of those coins. They sold those cheap, didn't they? December, they sold 50. January, they sold 76. They tell us how many miners they got. Holy cow, have they added a lot of miners. January of last year, they were at 4.3 thousand. Now they're over 12,000 miners. Ungodly. And in case you didn't know it, folks, the way they earn these Bitcoins, the computers are given mathematical problems that don't have answers, and they are told to solve them. And if they solve them, they get a reward, a Bitcoin. It used to be like four Bitcoins per answer, but I think it's down to one now. My question is, where did you get all these mathematical problems that we don't have answers to? Are there really that many of them? And what are we doing with all of that new information? All those answers. Are we putting it to use? I mean, for more than just mining Bitcoin. So the company's got a lot of miners. They are pulling in coins. I don't know how many coins they hold right now. Maybe you can find that information out diving into their financials. But the company is growing steady. Right now, the chart has had some ups and downs, and she's at a point to where she could start climbing. But overall, the company's fundamentals on themselves, without looking at the chart, are really good. As long as Bitcoin continues growing, I don't see any problem with any of these bit mining companies, as long as they can pay their electricity bill. Let's go take a look at that chart now. So let's chart any over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. This is a six month, four hour view for Sphere 3D. We've got our low bubble here at the beginning of December of 57 cents. Notice before the low bubble, we had no volume, none. After this bubble, it just hasn't stopped. It has been strong and consistent. Over the next 30 days, she climbed 800%, hitting a high of $4.30 here. Now, she created some strong resistances here. I've drawn those lines in, and as you can see, she's kind of stuck between them right now. 
Now, what I want you to notice is where she started six months ago was about right there at $2.20. Right now, she's at $2.30. She traveled a long ways, but she didn't get very far, did she? So after hitting this low bubble, she got up on top of that 200, bounced off of it real hard, hitting this high at the beginning of January. Then she fell fast down to the 200, which is now a lot higher than where it was when she started this game. Came underneath it, and now she's been meandering around that 200 inside that channel. And right now, she shows signs of trying to break out of this channel. Now, yesterday was a great day for her. She was down here at roughly $2.10, climbed all day, after market, pre-market, getting up to $2.64, and then falling early this morning all the way back down to $2.18, and finishing the day at $2.30, which is right on top of our 50-day SMA. So she's got herself a good resting spot right now for a bounce. Oscillators. They're a little weak. I mean, she's been falling all day. The fact that our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, is still above the pink line is a little impressive. Our MACD, it too is coming down right now, but it's on the right side of the line. And our RSI is a bit cool. That's down there at 50. I don't like to see it any less than 55. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's our channel. She's hitting the top of it, hitting the bottom of it. She broke it here, came back down to the center, which I didn't intend for that to be the center. You know, this is the one that goes for six months. She bounced off of that, came down underneath it, and as I said, she's trying to break out. We see that over and over again here. She's showing some incentive. She came down really hard, bounced off her 200-day haul, which penny stocks really respect. I take this bounce seriously. She put herself back up on the 200 SMA, which is what that is perfect for. And she's sitting there right now with all of her SMA starting to climb. This looks like it has potential to start climbing again. <laughs> but our osculators are not in agreement. They have come down really hard, and they aren't showing any turnaround right now. Not on the hourly. Take a look at that five-day, five-minute. Well, we definitely had a trend change here. Our 200-day SMA was falling. Right here, she turned very quickly. She has now been in an uptrend, although she is planed out right now. We hit a low of $2 about four or five days ago, and we had a high of $2.64 pre-market this morning. And as I said, once that bell hit, she fell fast and hard all the way down here to 218, coming back up, working through the 20, the 50, and right now it looks like she's sitting right on top of the 50 here too as well. So she has had a lot of chaos today by all means but after it all she's put herself in a strong position not only on the five minute chart but the one hour chart as well our osculators on the five minute they don't look too hot let's see uh, no we've got some depression here as well all of them are pushing down just a little bit looks like we're at the cusp of things starting to turn right now but you know i didn't pick this stock I didn't pick this stock <laughs> because of its hot chart. We looked at it because the viewers wanted me to look at it. But I do like the company because it's in a sector that's growing. Bitcoin. As long as Bitcoin is growing, the chances of any of these Bitcoin mining companies not growing, unless they do something stupid, is pretty nil. So any, like all the rest of them, is looking pretty good. It wouldn't hurt to put it on your watch list. It may not hurt to put it on your buy list as well. Ticker ANY. And of course, I don't have to say it, but I'm going to. Be sure to do some more due diligence, folks. You know I didn't cover it all. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.